Yo, so this is a legit three-quarter scale tapper build by yours truly, Techno Billy. The marquee is great. Everything is great. Check it out. I just want to say, uh, first, let me give um, a uh, shout out to everybody that I got the parts from the, the footrest bar, Home Depot clearance, all the graphics, RK graphics, that's G-R-A-P-H-I-X. The marquee, the uh, the translate marquee was from RK Graphics. However, the the um, the housing, the light, everything that was uh, repurposed from an arcade game factory marquee. Um, the uh, the drink holders and the beer taps were from a seller on eBay. Maybe somebody was trying to start a project and they flipped them. I can't find any more for sale, but whatever. I was lucky to catch them when I did. Um, inside the. Uh, Let's see. Oh, um, DIY retro arcade for the um, for the speaker grill piece, as well as a new uh, piece of plexiglass for the bezel. Yeah. So let's get into the build. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment, and I will do my best to uh, respond with a correct answer. <laughs> Thanks. All right, check it out. So I got my graphics in for my tapper build. I'm excited for this. Um, RK graphics. Um, got a blank control panel here. Um, yeah. Let's do this. Stay tuned. Okay, so I guess first I'm going to go ahead and start with something small. So I'll put this um, graphic on the control panel. A lot of people, when they go to apply these graphics, they like to get a little soapy water and they like to apply it to the surface. It just makes things a little, a little bit easier to uh, remove if you have to give it a second attempt. And then they just squeegee out the liquid. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm not going to be measuring anything in any special way. I'm literally just going to eyeball it all. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. Oh, and I already just spilled water all over the table. So, whatever. <sighs> Soapy water at that. So, and like I said, I'm, the the idea isn't to like you're not trying to fully saturate. You're just Get a little bit of this soapiness on here so it'll, uh, so it'll play, you know? So you have a little bit of play when you're putting your graphic on. So let's soapify this. Mm. Like I said, I'm just, just taking it easy. There's nothing, nothing too crazy. Very light coating. Okay, so I let it sit for a little while, and indeed there were a few little air bubbles. They were like right in this area over here, but I've since gone ahead and used my my trusty insurance card squeegee device to um to clear those out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my where is this from? This was like the cheapest one they had. Uh Oh, it's not going to come into focus. My Ace Hardware brand um, razor, exacto knife, whatever you want to call it, and I'm just going to cut off the excess. So check it out. Like, so like right along here, right along the side. There's a tiny bit, and then at the little L on the ends. So let's do it. Make sure my big head isn't in the way. 
I'll start a little wide and then I'll come in. So. And I'll trim that side in a second. <clears throat> Looking good, I will say. Be careful, Billy. Don't don't screw up the end. That would be terrible. Okay, now we got lit. I'm glad you guys caught me doing a good job there because I'm certainly not a pro. <clears throat> but in everything I do, I try to come good with the attempt, you know? Oh. Did I just screw up? No, I hit into the little L. We're okay. Are we? Yes, we're okay. I didn't screw anything up. <laughs> I thought that I did. All right, guys. Take me to the edge. Gentle. Might use this extra trim to redo my dining room table. Just kidding. It does look good though. All right. So we got that. What about over here? Okay. All the excess is gone there. Oh, I forgot. I made the top side flush, which I don't know. Do it however you'd like to do it. But that's how I did it. Cutting the table, I might know. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, that'll work there. Basically got it. Okay. Then there's a little more excess over here, so let me take care of that. I mean, this would probably get covered up with the uh, with the team molding, but whatever. Boom. Okay, I think that's it. Looking good. All right. 
Next is the uh, T-molding. All right, I want to say, I just want to say that I certainly could have done a better job with this, but I think we're going to be just fine. If you'll look, I'm... Just some things like that. That is going to get covered up. There's some things over here. I'm... Anyways, we got it. There's so much more to this build. I'll come back to the imperfections towards the end. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and apply some more graphics. Um, this is the the I panel and the J panel. A lot of people refer to the I panel as the kick plate. Um, as you can see, the J panel has um, it's an aftermarket one that has like speaker holes and like the um, screw holes for the speakers already um, like uh, already cut into it, as well as two buttons for I guess insert coin. Haven't really decided the route I'm gonna go yet, but I thought this one was gonna look cool. So anyways, oh, let me show you. I just, um, I stuck a, I stuck a piece of tape here. So let me show you my graphic. Um, I fell on the ground. So here's the graphic from the front. Like I said, it came from Arcade Graphics, you know, G-R-A-P-H-I-X or whatever, dot com. It's gonna go there, I'm just gonna cut it right there. So. For now, I have I'll fall down again. So I've put a piece of tape uh, right across here just so this will hold together. While while I put the graphic on, and then I'll um, then I'll cut it right down the seam, and uh, yeah, we'll be good. Peel this off. Yeah, eye panel, as I said, but most people call it, refer to that as the kick plate, which on a real arcade machine, it would be the kick plate. You'd probably want to rub some isopropyl alcohol, just dry it off, do whatever, you know. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to... I'm going to do kind of a bastardized version of, like, the tutorials from, um... Uh... Arcade Graphics, yeah. Oops, I need to actually move this over just... Just a hair, okay. We're not going anywhere. All right, stand by. All right, let's do this. Here's my soapified water. So I'm just gonna pour some. I'm using the back side of the uh, of the eye panel, aka kick plate, because um, I don't know. That way, if I if I ever wanted to, I could flip it back around and turn this into a final fight cap again. But I can tell you now that won't be happening. This will not be going back to a final fight. All right. Let's see how this matches up. Okay. Actually, I already did. <laughs> Pretty good there. Wow. Okay. So, so the top we want to have have a little. Uh -huh. 
not an exacto again it's my ace hardware like three bucks whatever and uh yeah you guys can see the spot so right over here focus dude all right so i'm just gonna cut through here is that the blade yeah my table probably doesn't like this but i also don't care Did I get that or no? It's a million dollar equation. Well, no, I didn't. So now we eyeball it. Right. How's that? So check it out. Um, yeah, so I got this. Um, I got this Final Fight cab secondhand, and uh, yeah, some parts of the body, I guess, from them moving around and stuff, have definitely seen better days, as you can see right here. So I need to. Yeah, and there's like stuff sticking up. The graphic isn't gonna apply very well to that, so I need to smooth that out. So I've got my trusty. Uh, well, trusty. I've never used this thing before. My my Ryobi uh, sander. And we're going to see if it works. I've literally never even turned this thing on. It came in some, like, gift bundle. Let's get this camera up. 
Thanks for hanging out, guys. All right. Clippy, clippy. Clippy, clippy. Okay. I don't know what the power is. Is this? Oh, it is. Dude, that was simple. Well, this cabinet's, <laughs> well, that, that, that was really easy. Okay, well, let me see. How does it feel? It feels like I need to go just a hair lower. Okay, I like that. Now I just need to uh, wipe this side down with some uh, isopropyl alcohol and I can begin wrapping it. Stand by. Okay, so we're back. Um, got busy yesterday, but hey, now I'm back at it. We need to cut the middle out of this bezel for the monitor. So let's go ahead and do that. Boom. All right, I struggled my way through that bezel cut, but we're going to be all right. Onward. Okay, uh, let's apply some side graphics to the pepper dip. Yeah, I know I'm using scotch magic tape or whatever to uh, tape off the cab instead of panel tape or masking tape or whatever. I don't care. So, yeah. Let's do this. According to RK Graphics, you make a little, so you put some tape over here, put some tape over here, you make it flap. So, I'm flapping. I'm flapping in the wind. The greatest song on any NES game. I know that's unrelated to this. Well, sorry. Any video game of all time. The greatest song is The Moon on DuckTales on NES. just thought I'd share that. Getting dull, getting dull. All right, so they said that this thing, oh, I'm already starting to stick it. Terrible job, Billy. He <laughs> said smooth, broad strokes and you'll be fine. Okay.
Sorry, I'm just I'm sticking once again <laughs> so I can begin my smooth my smooth and broad strokes. Okay, well, ooh, there's some air. Where was that air at? Right there. on this graphic is taking some of the <laughs> some of the, the black on from the final bike dab with it. Nice. It's definitely not going anywhere once it's on. Okay, so I, uh, I took a little break from applying the graphics. I just applied uh, the one side, and then I started thinking about the marquee. I was like, yo, what am I going to do here? Oh, yeah, look at all that crap back there. That's, that's all construction and mail-related, unopened package, whatever. Anyways, so I got back to... Um, I started thinking about the marquee. I was like, whoa, what am I going to do? So I had this dude right here. I was like, well, what am I going to put it in? So, for the sake of finishing this project, I'm actually reappropriating one of my other marquees from my Mortal Kombat cabinet. This is a um, arcade game factory, and I'm just going to swap the uh, the graphic out. This tapper, yeah, I've, I've disassembled this. This tapper does just hang over the sides ever so much so i'm gonna get that trimmed and uh yeah let's see how it looks in uh just a minute boom all right so check it out a lot has progressed since i last filmed dude i built it all it's here hang on let's Let's turn that sound down. Okay. So here is the complete tapper cabinet. As you could see, uh, well, let's let's start let's start on the control panel. Okay. Um, I got these little uh, little red buttons that are like the exact same ones that are on the actual full size arcade cabinet. I've got some cup like some beer holders like drink holders that i found on ebay they came in like a yellow goldish similar to what the original arcade cab came with but i wasn't really happy with that color from that plastic so i spray painted them in aged copper and i think it looks well i've got these joystick handles from the same ebay seller which the listing is gone so there's really nothing to link you to um i think maybe they had a, a project they were gonna do and never have who knows but anyway so i've got these budweiser beer tap handles just like the original arcade um they're uh 
so the way tapper works is uh the beer tap like the there's there's really no there's no pour and serve command as it says it's it's really just one button you know that pour and then when you release it serves so i've got th these are actually eight way so there's currently an eight way gate in here and i've got all directions assigned to do it so it doesn't matter how you yank it but i've also got some two way um gates coming from focus attack for right here and right here and then right here my boot my move bartender that is a four way gate so up down left right you know and uh well sorry i should say the stupid eight way is still in there but the four way might be coming in the mail today i don't know um so yeah this looks good my team molding looks good like i said any little imperfections were covered up so no worries there everything looks smooth here the marquee looks good if we go up top i've got an amp right here we can crank it up a little wireless keyboard here in case just in case i needed to do something if i wanted to add to games you know i could if i wanted to add other variants of tapper if i wanted to put timber on here who knows about tim shout out to timber all right so if i wanted to put some uh other builds on here i could uh yeah let's move it down a little bit so here's my grill you can see my speakers in here of course tapper was a mono game but we're uh uh we have two speakers here. I'm not doing stereo audio. We effectively have dual mono. Um, I've got two buttons here. These are my insert coin. And then let's go a little further down. On the real tapper cabinet, there was like a there was like a foot bar like you would have at a bar, you know? I found this rod that was hang on. Tapper, I love you, but be quiet. We're talking. Um Anyways, this was like a, uh, it was like a shower towel rod, whatever you want to call it, at Home Depot, and it was like a much darker color, and I sprayed it that same aged copper that I, that I made these, and, but yeah, dude, I think it looks good. Check that out, I got a little blemish right there, I'm gonna take care of that, that was just, like when it was drying or whatever, I'll touch that up today, I think, um, uh, but yeah, as far as the cabinet looks, this is clean, man. I might color these as well or black them out. I haven't really decided. They're keeping the um, uh, drink holder in place. And there's some screws in the back, too. But yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at the internals. All right, let's start with the back. Okay, so here's... My uh, Kinter amp. Everybody uses this amp. You know, you've if you've done a build, you've seen it before, and if you've seen other builds, you saw some one where someone probably stuck one in there. They come under a million different brand names, but they look like this. Sometimes they're red, sometimes they're blue. I've got that other cheap keyboard that everybody uses. I've been using these for God, I've been using these for years now, way before RK One Up was even a thing. And uh, yeah, they just I just have it Velcro on with a little like velcro or hook and loop tape whatever you want to call it and as you can see this is like legit the old panel that was on here from the final fight it's all bright on the inside from the uh from that backlit marquee and let's get down lower so down here i've got the uh i've got inlet power going on you know like uh this is like a computer power plug like you you know and uh the cabinet gets flipped on and off right here um, if you're curious on how to wire inlet power B Kong has a great video on it I will put it in the uh, description for the video and uh, yeah let's get it open all right so let's take a look in here well first let's let's start at the back like I said inlet power I'll put a link in the description for uh, for B Kong's video, but basically a power wire to here, and then I've got it going to a um, little power plug right there, which I plug into a power strip, and then all my stuff plugs into that. So that way I can control it all with a little switch right here. I might also put a switch on the top of the cabinet. I don't know. We'll see, but older arcade machines 
didn't typically have that. It was always on like the side or the back or whatever. So got my Ryobi light in here, just lighting it up so we could check everything out. It's a pretty cool light. Uh, yeah, so I've got my power strip right here. I've got three things plugged into it. One is the Pi. Here is my power brick that goes to my, this is an arcade one up power brick and I've got it going to a, uh, a splitter and the, um, sorry, it's right here. Actually the, uh, this guy, sorry, here's a splitter and it goes up to the backlit marquee and then over here to the LCD controller. Um, the other plug is for the amp. I could have, I could have split this power plug out one more time and powered the amp as well. I don't know. I just didn't. Um, and then there was another power outlet here that I closed off with electrical tape. Just, uh, you know, it's like dust or whatever doesn't get in there. Um, scrolling up. So my, uh, my speakers, yes, you do see electrical tape holding them in. And there's, uh, I've got them on tight. There's no vibration or anything. I mean, we're playing, come on, we're playing Tapper. I had taken these, here, let's go down here. I had taken the screws that come with it and I had painted them to be the right color and I thought about putting them in the front. It just seemed cleaner to me to not, to not have that. So, yeah, I didn't do it. Anyways, looking in here, you can see the backside. Those two uh, buttons that I use on the front for my insert coin. Those were actually reappropriated from my Gen 1 Street Fighter 2 from way back when I modded it. They were just sitting in a box and I remembered that I had them, so I went and grabbed them. Um, let's scroll up. So right here, this is a Pi 3B Plus. I've got my three controllers plugged into it. And uh, here's my LCD. Um, controller driver board whatever you want to call it i've got the ground wire coming from the uh from the monitor i've just got that secured right here there's my lvds uh there's the buttons to in case you need to make any changes yeah i know my cable ties have the ends hanging off i didn't trim them i don't care you know uh yeah anyways all the way up i've just kind of got wires Snug together and cinched with some cable ties when I can, you know, like here. So, not the cleanest, but it's also not entirely disheveled, you know. There's things that are in here. I might, I might lock this in place. I haven't decided. I might, I might stick this down just so it doesn't move. Oh, if you look over here, man, I have. I had thought about potentially in the future, oh, you can reuse it in the final fight if you want to. No way. Look at all those marks from uh, from when I was cutting the um, the holes. <laughs> yeah, you could even see the player one, player two holes from when I was cutting out uh, everything on the um, on that panel right there on the speaker panel. Uh, and like I said, my uh, here's my encoder board, encoder board, and another encoder board. Um, you could also see in here, you could see I had to, I had to like use a router and route out a little bit for my, for those little player one and player two start buttons because they were really small. And uh, yeah, I just, I used the existing like wires that I had that came with the, co the encoder board to plug them up. Uh, we're HDMI, we're, um, I'm getting my, uh, oh, here's something. A lot of people don't talk about this, but then there's a lot of people that ask about it, okay? Um, so right, so right here, this is, uh, that's audio right there. If you, get, get into focus. That's audio right there, those four pins. There's a, uh, there's like left, uh, Positive, left, uh, ground, right, pos or like left positive, left negative, right positive, right negative, whatever. Anyways, you could, uh, like you could wire into that if you wanted to and it'll power your audio, you know, and it, and it, and people say that it doesn't suck, but what do I do? I don't know. I've gone with the amp every time. And so that's why my amp is up through there and, uh. Yeah, just plugged right in. This is going to the Pi. This is going to my speakers. 
here's my power cord, you know. <laughs> Final fight, rest in peace, although I'd say you've been given new life, you know, as, as Tapper, a game that I'll, I'll actually play more, even though I do have a Final Fight, you know, and I do play it. Uh, first gen monitor, as you can see, you know. This uh, about wraps it up, dude. Yeah. Let's, um, let's close it up and take another look at the outside again and then maybe do some gameplay. All right, I lied. We're not done yet. You might want to see this. So I use little, uh, I'm, these little adhesive PCB extenders to hold stuff in place, like little self-adhesive PCB risers. So that way nothing's touching metal, you know, and we're, uh, and we're good. Yeah, I don't always put like four of them in every corner. I just put enough to hold it down and yeah, they work. All right, let's, uh, let's test it out. <laughs> I think it's this one. Sun? Yep. He's putting them in. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Let's see if I can beat this level. No. One more time, come on. <laughs> Anyways, oh look at me, I'm at the top. Okay, yeah, I was already playing it first. Well, I wasn't playing. I was just like getting sound and stuff set up. <laughs> and I've done it. Seriously, I want to say, guys, like, I used to play Tapper on all those, like, whatever greatest hits collections that you would find on, like, the PlayStation or, or whatever, you know, and I, I really enjoyed it, you know? So, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy that I've got my own Tapper cabinet. I know they did the, uh, the Midway Legacy recently that has root beer tapper on it, but you know, it's just not the same. Come on, this is what we want. This is what the people want to see. They want this. They, they want 
RK1 up to sell them a pimped out and straight up Budweiser branded tapper cabinet. If you have to, do root beer tapper, but just give us something like this. It's beautiful. That said, uh, if you if you like the video, um, yeah, click the like button, get subscribed. Techno Billy, there's more coming, I promise. And uh, yeah, seriously, thank you for hanging out. I know my videos are a bit long-winded, but hey, that's... Uh, that's the format for this channel, so uh, yeah, get used to it. Have a great day. Like, subscribe. Thank you.